Uh, hello students uh, welcome back to this lecture uh, so let's uh, continue where we had stopped uh, so we had seen the asymmetric uh, gates um, so let me redraw that asymmetric gate uh, of the two input and gate so the pull up side uh, we had two of the pmos transistors which are in uh, parallel and then the pull down side we have two of the transistors which are in series so i have now the pmos and then the uh, nmos transistor drawn and uh, we had seen a size of 2 and 2 and then here we had a size of uh, 4 by 3 and then a size of 4. so i'm going to consider this particular portion uh, and then draw it as a two transistor series transistors uh, for the inputs a and b and uh, this is my output y right and i'm going to rewrite this in the form of 4 by 3 w um, and then uh, 4 w and then we will have a channel length of 1 channel length of 1l right so where l represents uh, for that particular technology node uh, if it is uh, for a 65 nanometer technology node, it will be 1L, uh, where 1L represents 50 nanometers, okay? Now, what we really need is an equivalent transistor, uh, an equivalent transistor, so that uh, the current from this equivalent transistor is, uh, you know, becomes easier for us to calculate. And from this particular current, I should be able to draw the 2 is to 1 inverter, right? So what we really want is to find out for the, you know, to estimate the logical effort of the transistor uh, of the input A and B, we need to identify what is the current that will be flowing across uh, this particular path, right? And that becomes much easier if I have a single equivalent transistor, right? And then it becomes easier to find out what is that particular current and if you know, if it is, if it's a current of I, I should be able to find, uh, you know, form a 2 is to 1 inverter uh, or any other size of inverter uh, where the current flow is the same current as what is flowing in this particular 2 series transistor, which is nothing but equivalent transistor of 1. Uh, and then if this current and then this current are same, then I can, I should be able to find out what is the logical effort, what is the parasitics right and then help facilitate the linear delay model to uh, to uh, estimate the overall delay of the critical path right what we had done previously is uh, you know if i had the same uh, sizes so if it was the size of 4w and then 4w and then the channel length of lnl its equivalent transistor will be nothing but uh, 4w comma uh, twice the channel length or 2l or we could have also said that it is nothing but 4w divided by 2 comma l right so uh, uh, so you know let me let me take one more slide here so what i meant was if i had uh, you know uh, two transistors of the w the size and then a channel length of l its equivalent transistor, its equivalent transistor turned out to be uh, nothing but uh, W comma 2L. This is what we had seen. Or we could also say that this is nothing but W by 2 comma L. Because both the current equations, uh, this current equations uh, will match with that of this particular current equation. And that's why we said that, okay, this is my uh, size. Uh, this is my equivalent transistor or this is my equivalent transistor. Right. Now, if suppose if it is 4 by 3 here and then 4W here, what should be my size here? What should be the equivalent uh, transistor sizing? So that is the question that we need to answer. If I can find out that size, that will be very useful in estimating what is the benchmark inverter I have to consider for estimating uh, the, uh, the logical effort and then the parasitics. 
right? Because I think four by three and four, it is kind of very easy uh, because we know that the falling resistance is nothing but R, and so two is to one. But if it is of some different ratio, where I will not get uh, that particular falling ratio, and then more on top of it, if we use instead of a long channel current model, uh, instead of that, if we use a short channel current model, then I think this particular estimation will become a little bit uh, tedious, right? So what we are going to do is moving ahead. So I have this four by three and four W uh, transistors. We want to find out the equivalent transistor in the form of equivalent single transistors where I can get this current to be same, right? Now suppose that uh, you know the A transistor has four by three W and then the B transistor has uh, four W and then the same channel length of L. And let's say that it's equivalent C transistor. The single transistor is four by three W width and then X length. That means I need to find out what is X, right? So I'm saying that a B transistor in series is equivalent to a single C transistor uh, with X uh, length and four by three W and four W is being uh, equivalent to that of a single transistor of four by three W. So that means that this current here, IC current, it should be equal to that of this current that is flowing uh, along the two series transistors. And whenever we have this two series transistors, we know that you know the transistor A will be in saturation and then B will be in linear. So my current equations, the saturation current and the linear current should be same as that of this single equivalent transistor uh, current, I see. And uh, if this is, this is the, you know, if, uh, if we consider VDD here and then uh, C being one here, uh, there's logic level one, that means VDD is passed here. So this particular transistor will always be in the saturation mode. And again, A and B, uh, it has to operate only when, uh, you know, when we give a logic level of one, that means uh, VDD is being supplied to the transistor A input and VDD is supplied to the transistor B input. If VDD is the case here for the, uh, for the gate side of the transistor A, VDD minus X, uh, VX will be nothing but VGS and VDS will be nothing but VDD minus VX. So VDS, uh, it's always greater than VGS minus VD. So that's why this will be always be in saturation and then this will be in linear region, right? And then this will be in saturation because we have the VGS to be nothing but VDD, uh, which will always, you know, this uh, VDS is nothing but VDD, so which will VDD minus uh, VDD, this VDS will always be greater than VGS minus VD. So if I have this particular current equation, IC current equation, it will be nothing but beta by two uh, the width is 4 by 3, um, so beta will get uh, multiplied by 4 by 3 and then the channel length is XL, so 1 by X uh, will be scaled to the beta. So I will have this particular uh, uh, variation in the beta uh, and then VDD minus VD the whole square. The saturation current for the transistor A uh, is can be written as beta by 2 and then there will be a scaling factor of 4 by 3 here. Uh, multiplied by VDD minus VX minus VT the whole square because this is the VGS component for the transistor A. The linear current for the B transistor here is nothing but uh, beta into 4 multiplied by uh, VDD minus VD minus uh, VX by 2 multiplied by VX. So if I equate these three currents, uh, so what we, we are likely to get is uh, what should be the X value Right? But we have two variables, what is x and what is vx, and we have uh, three, uh, and we have two equations basically, and two variables, all right? So if ia should be equated to ic, I'll get one equation. If ia is equal to ib, I'll get another equation, and I have two variables, so I should be able to find out the x value. Uh, if I equate ia and ic, I should be able to find out what is x uh, in terms of vx, so this is what I'll get. And if I equate IA and IB, I should be able to find out what is VX. Uh, VX turns out to be uh, nothing but uh, VDD minus VT multiplied by one minus uh, square root of three by two. So this is nothing but uh, in a short form, I have written it as nothing but uh, VDD minus VT. So it is nothing but 0 0.7. That is something we can consider where VDD is one volts and VT is 0.3 volts. So Vx turns out to be 0.1339 into Vdt, uh, which is nothing but Vdd minus uh, Vt, right, 0.7 volts. And x, so therefore x turns out to be 4 by 3. Right? So if I put this particular value of x here, which is nothing but 4 by 3, so 4 by 3 w comma 4 by 3 x, and if I rewrite that particular current equation, 
all right so the current equation for this particular transistor 4 by 3 w and 4 by 3 x which will be nothing but saturation current beta by 2 width is scaled by 4 by 3 length is scaled by 4 by 3 so i have to write it in the denominator of 4 by 3 so this gets cancelled this gets cancelled what we have is vdd minus vd the whole square now this will be my current equation for the transistor whose width is scaled by 4 by 3 and x is also 4 by 3 turns out to be nothing but same as that of 1w and then 1l right beta by 2 vdd minus vdd the whole square is nothing but this also this particular current is also the same okay okay coming back to this 4 by 3w and then 4 by 3x so what it really means is if i have these two transistors in series which is having a width of 4 by 3w comma l uh, i mean l being the channel length width is 4 by 3 uh, another transistor in series is 4. We can consider it to be an equivalent transistor of 4 by 3 W comma XL where X I need to estimate. I can do the estimation using the current equations, right? And then find out what is the X value or else a simplified form will be nothing but measure the relative width of A here, relative width of B and then the reciprocal of this relative widths. Uh, will give me the relative length of the equivalent transistor, right? What it means is, let's try to calculate what is the relative width of A. So the relative width of A is nothing but this transistor sizing, 4 by 3 sizing divided by the 4 by 3 I've taken in the equivalent uh, transistor, single transistor. So 4 by 3 W divided by 4 by 3 will be nothing but 1. Relative width of B will be nothing but 4 W divided by the 4 by 3 w uh, of the single equivalent transistor so it will be nothing but 3 the reciprocal of this you know the value of 1 and 3 the reciprocal of that will be nothing but 4 by 3 and that is what the x will be in fact this particular simplified form is actually coming from the, our current equations we had three current equations uh, two of them uh, you know equated we'll get two equations and then two variables we will be able to evaluate the x value Right, so this particular simplified form is actually coming from there, but just for you know, just as a um, handy calculation, if I'm trying to find out uh, the single equivalent transistor, I can have this as 4 by 3 w and then comma x w, where I can find this x as nothing but the reciprocal sum, the sum of the reciprocal of the relative widths. Right, so I'll be able to get the x value. I can consider a different width in the equivalent transistor. So instead of 4 by 3 W, I can consider 4 W and find out the X using the same uh, method. So find out the relative width of A. So 4 by 3 divided by 4. So this is now 4 instead of 4 by 3. Now I have chosen or selected a 4 width here in the, sing, uh, in the equivalent single transistor. So 4 by 3 will be this one because this is the relative width of A I'm trying to find out, which will be 1 by 3. And the relative width of B here will be nothing but 4W divided by 4W will be 1. And X value is nothing but the relative uh, length of the equivalent transistor will be nothing but the sum of the reciprocal of this relative widths. So the reciprocal will be 1 by 3's reciprocal will be 3 and uh, 1's reciprocal will be 1. So it will be 4. So I'll get X as 4 if I consider 4W as the equivalent single transistor width. So finally, I'll get a W by L because the current of 4w comma 4l will be same as that of the current of w comma l right in fact i can actually choose a different uh, width here for the equivalent transistor so in fact i can choose an uh, 8w here where x will turn uh, turns out to be 8 and if i choose a 10w there i'll get an x as 10 right because i have chosen 4 by 3 and 4 such that my equivalent falling resistance is r and that's the reason why I'm getting uh, the, the overall falling resistance as R coming from the current of I.